No, 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 no. We're about to lose the sleeves. Welcome back to episode 14 of the Blood Pack, you beautiful people. Now, last episode, we managed to get Opper cloned and now is running around. Has pretty much all of the bionics and is super powerful and an absolute beast. So, <laughs> yeah, that happened. The start of the Vulture clone army is coming along and, yep, Oppa doesn't fail as much, so just with that extra 5% consciousness is making a massive difference. Now we have a second clone here, who should be a slightly improved version, because they have the Neuro Stimulator. This adds plus 10% consciousness, 15% sight, plus 10% pain. Now the pain isn't an issue because that is offset by the sleep quality being high, which we like, that's really good. Also has the Cortex Augmenter, which then adds an extra 5%, so that's an extra 15% consciousness. Now, consciousness affects all of the other stats pretty much. So they're going to be faster at moving, manipulation, better at talking, eating, all of those good things. Other than hearing and breathing, I guess, and sight. But it looks like it does affect eating. Yeah. Cool. Anything else it is affected by? No, so it's just these, <laughs> these stats along here. So consciousness, moving manipulation, talking, eating. Okay, yeah, so those ones there, the top five. Seven, that's really good, but also affects uh, their day-to-day -day work, so building and stuff. Now, I think we came to the conclusion that Vulture have a 30% chance to fail at building. You put that 5% extra consciousness, and it seems that they just don't fail anymore, so that is going to be super good for us. These clones over here, well, these sleeves, 78.63. And then this one is 78, which is really good. This sleeve over here is going to be a new recommended name, which is Zahilsa, if I'm saying that right. Just let me know if I'm saying it wrong. The next one after that, so one of these two, is going to be Mickey Mark II, seeing as Mickey went and got kidnapped pretty early on. And then that means I'll have this one sleeve here. If we don't do anything with it, Feel free to bang a name down and claim that sleeve for yourself. But let's get on. We've got a lot of processing to do, working through a bunch of things, and we are in a really good situation because we're getting this multi analyzer done. But once that multi analyzer is done, we're going on to the Protheum fundamentals, which is going to be a big old research. But we did find that Protheum beacon, which means we have the tech proof persona cores. These tech proof persona cores we can bang onto the research, which means we're going to get the Protheum tech. Then all we need to do is find an AI persona core. And then, yeah, we can just start smashing through that Prothean technology. So we're going to have Prothean technology in, like, the mid-late game. Yeah, mid-late. The end of the mid-game. I wouldn't quite call us end-game just yet because of our tech level, even though we definitely could be end-game. We probably could build a ship and fly out and it wouldn't be an issue. But that's not the plan. I have a plan for the series after this, and it involves us creating a massive, amazing Vulture Krogan army. And we still haven't cloned any Krogans, but we have got a bunch of Vulture. Adding on to the plans for this episode, we are going to go and make a second one of these factories. And I'm thinking we'll bang one there and then an extra one here. With these factories, we're going to be able to have a pretty much continuous supply of steel. And I think for some reason in this playthrough steel is going to be a massive issue. He says as everything is made out of steel. <laughs> but details. We're going to need a lot of steel. So I think we set up another two rooms maybe. We might need to get a third room. But these give us... So that's 40 every 12 hours. So that's 80 a day. Then we get a bunch of them. And we're very quickly going to be on a very respectable amount of steel coming through. And also, our guys love smashing up those granite chunks into granite blocks because the walls that we're using, these walls aren't, but the actual proper walls that we're moving across to are the heavy granite reinforced walls, which cost 15 blocks a piece, which is pretty much three quarters of a chunk. So naturally, we are going to need a load of those. And putting down the rough templates for them, it looks like they're going to fit in pretty well. Not super in line, doesn't look crazy smart but then it is a bunch of Vulture and Krogan trying to build some stuff so you know let's uh, say it's a, a role playing aesthetic that they're not going to be trying to make everything look beautiful other side is 
If you watch any of my series, you know my bases just don't look pretty. Simple as that. One day they will, and people will be like, yeah, you know Conzi plays, yeah, he's, he's really good at making really good looking bases. Until that point, I, I need to unfortunately let you know that I'm terrible at making bases. <laughs> but with these upgraded Vorture, they are just banging through this super quick. So we got two oppers. When did that happen? Oh, he's woken up. That's cool. Nice. Okay. So this is Zahilsa. I believe that's how it's said. If it's not, like I said, just let me know. Cool. And then the next one is going to be Mickey Mark II. After Mickey getting kidnapped. Hopefully this fortune doesn't get kidnapped. Because it's like at least 30,000 invested into one vulture, Making them the most expensive vulture to ever have lived. Not going to lie. <laughs> Got a little bit carried away of how quick the vulture were mining. And we might have had a whole bunch of roof cave-ins. Which did cost us a whole bunch of vultures. So I think... If I've done it right... We've got the walls in the right place. So we're running this template. But for some reason... <laughs> these walls just didn't stop the cave-ins. Which I guess is kind of fair. So we've gone in... Removed the walls. We've put some reinforced granite walls in. We're going to get them there. Cancelled these ones here. And hope, being the key word, that this will be in the right place to stop the walls from caving in. I guess there's only one way to find out. Nearly forgot about this one. So we brought that Masterwork Battle Rifle not that long ago. So 28 damage, which is awesome. 62% armor penetration, which is insane. Brilliant accuracy, good cooldown. So we will give that to uh, Zilsa, just because uh, they don't have a gun yet. And I think Battle Rifles are kind of what we need, because we've got a lot of like Sniper Rifles... Uh, you can drop that, you don't need that. Yes, yeah, so a lot of sniper rifles, one grenade launcher, and a bunch of like single fire weapons. And then what we do want to do is we want to keep an eye out for the LMG. So first chance we get, we want to start pumping them up. Now they're super, 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 super expensive. So the chance of us having them anytime soon, probably not likely because of the research and all that. But if we can find them and we can buy them, we are definitely going to go and get them. Because they are a awesome bit of kit. I think possibly my favourite gun from this uh, Mass Effect, uh, well, the Rim Effect mod list. Other than maybe the Widow. That Widow is awesome. Mechive is coming in with a few centipedes, and it looks like a couple Lancers and two pikemen. Not a massive raid. Interesting to start the episode off, but we are going to be able to deal with this super, super quickly. So, no massive worries there. We're still working through the steel on the map here, and there's still a little section up there. As for what's happening with the factories, we ran out of steel, so that's basically all ground to a halt and we don't have any mechanical components, but we were able just to go and buy 3,000 steel. Sold off all of the stuff that we've been breaking down from the corpses, so that's a bunch of leather and chem fuel, which got us a nice amount of money, so we were able to buy all that steel and still turn a profit. The little mechanoids didn't stand a chance, they literally just came in, put their head around the corner and got absolutely slotted. Now, these centipedes might be a little bit more interesting, so let's get Grugon out. Let's stun them and see how much damage we can do. They're all bunched up and they're really big, so they're going to be super easy to hit. But they should fall nice and quickly. Everyone can fire, it looks like. Other than Belakar, because he is up in the corner and he's got an SMG. What is the range on that? It's not great. Maybe if we can bring him down here, so good off. You're coming up here, Bella Cart, you're coming down here. And then you probably have a better better line of fire as such, so we can actually shoot some stuff. We'll save those new defensive positions. Chinook, is there a reason you're not firing? No. Okay, just there chilling. We'll figure that out in a second. Get all of these guys, save the new defensive positions. And Bella Car still doesn't have a line of sight because it looks like the wall's in the way. Okay, when things move in, he should be able to deal with them. So he's going to have like a nice like cross field or fire, which is going to work out really well for us. And when you're ready to die, mate, just uh, just fall over, all right? About time. It's dead. Cool. We'll sort this. Turns out our guys didn't sort um, the blight out quick enough, so it's now spread along there. I think that this is far enough apart that it's not going to spread. 
But we do have it marked up to be chopped down. So hopefully that will get sorted. Patrick, what are you doing there, mate? Move off. It looks like we got no choice but to move out of the base. As soon as that mechanoid raid ended and I'd done my little speech about the blight, the EMA dynamo kicked in. Defended by 14 pirates. And I think for this, our best bet is going to go with the Krogans because they have like, they're super quick. And then we will take the new recruits. <laughs> Market value 18,000. Uh, Crank's still pretty high up there as well. And what is your movement? How much difference do you make? Yeah, 0.3 days. We take those off. Sweet, we're going to get there in no time. We're going to be a little bit outnumbered, so... We probably won't leave Okia thinking about it because Okia does a lot of the work. Grugot, we need to leave behind as well. We'll take Patrick and Chinook. And I need one more. Ah, uh, we will take Okia. Fine. We'll take the donkey so we can actually loot some stuff and we'll take the rest of them. Cool, so we got, what, like 260 odd storage capacity. Ah, uh, we should have food. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, and they'll be there in no time. Then we go in, we take that out. And who are these? Prison camp. Is that a decent job for us? I doubt it's going to be. So the prison camp, the Tory militants want this destroyed. Reward prestige recon armor. Helmet excellent. And recon helmet excellent. Do you know what? Yeah, we can just go in. Bing, bang, bosh. And then just do that because we're going to be next to it. And then we get a bunch of tech. Nice. No! No, 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 no. We're about to lose the sleeves. So that EMI field is going to knock out the power. Which means the sleeves are going to run. Are going to like soon like get destroyed. I don't know how long they're going to hold. We've got a manhunter pack. A bunch of horses. Cool. Where are our guys? going this way okay well we've had a really good run for quite a few episodes so I think that this is kind of only fair that everything tries to wipe us out now let's get an incinerate right here we should be able to get a bunch of the horses on fire you go that way Chinook you're doing fine mate probably need to pull you back let's get you here Hopper let's get you there not that going into cover is going to make any difference Zilsa over here, Akia, we're going to need to move you to this bit, Grugon, uh, let's get you a defense matrix up so you, you can hold a little bit longer, Chinook's doing fine, hopefully they don't take out our donkeys, okay manhunters don't go after animals it'd appear, then that's annoying, we're taking damage already before we've gone onto that and we needed to get out there quickly, Grugon, once the donkeys are out of the way mate, you're just going to um, catch yourself on fire if you don't mind. Just tell you what, let's just go there. Cool. Can you just gauge? Nope, but they're getting spread out. Chinook is down. We've got some donkey foals coming in. Yeah, didn't deal with that very well. Would have been better off pulling back to the kill zone and then trying to take them from there, but we kind of don't have time. We have to move. Hopper, get into that corner. Then only three of them can attack you at a time. Okay. Zilsa is doing really well. He's managed to clear his up and taken the others out. Patrick is doing what he can, which is actually doing really well. Heatwave is over. We should have been at that dynamo. We should be at that dynamo already. Um, do you want to bang down and incinerate right there? Catch those ones out. Then once we get a chance, we need to push down and rescue Ergnot. Oh no, that's Grugon. Okay, so he's doing fine. Okay, fine. Just failed in construction. I thought that was the sleeves done. That is not what we want. If those sleeves go down, that is a big problem for us. Well, it's not the end of the world, but that's uh, 20 days just lost. And that's what I said about if there's any like power outage, uh, it's a bit of an issue. Going down another fire. Grugon, you are a bit of a beast in close combat, mate. I am just going to throw that out there. There's not many people I know that can fight like 20 horses and still be alright. Mountain Hunter Pack is done. A one-off draft. What can we do? 
I think we just need to remove from caravan on these. Everyone that's unconscious and then hopefully they carry on and go out and see if we can do it with four people. I don't like it, but I think that's what we need to do. These guys will get back up. Did you lose anything? It's not looking like it. Um, okay, mangled right eye. Okay, that's fine. We can deal with that. Anything on you? No. Cool, one of the horses is back up. It keeps coming along. Ergnot's coming along. Yeah, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Bit of a setback. We're just going to have to be like super smart and sneaky with how we fight those pirates. Because they are just going to bend us over and spank us if we fight them head on. And is anyone going to come and rescue you? Good off. And what about you? Good night. Cool. Done. Bit of a waste of chem fuel. <laughs> I'm seeing as the corpses are burning. But if we can get in and out, that's not an issue. And how are you guys doing? You're doing alright. Let's have a little look-see over here. How are your sleeves holding? Sleeves are holding okay. And it's 3 o'clock now, so we should be in in no time. All of the Vorture are healed up, thankfully, because, well, that's the Vorture. Krogan's are fine. Let's just hope they're not very well equipped. And as for equipment on these guys, they've got some okay stuff. So we've got like some recon armor over here. We've got some riot kit, refractor helmet. They do have that rocket launcher. So, all we need to do is pull this way. I think it's going to be just about our best bet. Patrick, you go to there, mate. You can watch Overwatch. Zilsa, you go here. Where's the rocket launcher? That should be on one of the guys. Looks like they've gone inside. That's cool. Not a problem. I'm okay with that. You guys still firing? Yep. Happy. That's Ergnot. We want Grugon. Oh no, that's Ikea. So let's go defense matrix. Move forward. You move to here. And this is who we're looking for. Rin. Thankfully, Defense Matrix is off, so that rocket should do too much. No, just strip the shield. Cool. You guys are happy here? Yep, yeah, you guys are doing fine. Grugon. Let's go catch that guy in the back on fire. Let's just get him out of cover. Fine, fine, fine. All looking good here. Patrick, have you got a shot on him, mate? He's going to be annoying if we don't take him out. Zilsa, you move in. You guys come down here. Let's push. Um, everything into that EMO dynamo first chance we get. You guys want to hit at all? You've got like level 20 in shooting, you guys should be fine. Okay, that's just the bedrooms, so it's in this section here. Are any of them going to be worth... No, let's not even worry about that. Here, straight through the wall. Move in. Come on, come on, come on. This is literally going to be down to the minute. In, in, move, move, move. Shoot. Come on. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to say uh, sleeve incubate is wiped out or failed or any of that stuff. Cool. Okay, what happened to you guys? Brain shock. Meh, fair enough. I think they'll survive. I don't think there's too much here. But, the important part. Zoom in. Wait until the power comes back on. And the sleeves survived. They survived. Awesome. Yep, all power's back on. Bug repellers are back on. Operation Nook's still taking a while to heal up, mind you. And anyone want to go feed them? Who's set for... Warden. Four tack, you can go Warden. And good off, you're going to go Warden. And let's put a key on Warden as well. Anytime we're ready, heal them up, feed them up so they don't starve. Recreation we're not too bothered about. Can we put a TV in at all? No, we've got no fancy recreation in that sense. Cool, they're going to survive. Sleeves have survived. And now we just have this bit, and everyone is just getting some Z's. Cool. 
Grugon, I know you just got brained, but equip that for us, mate. And equip that. Is this helmet going to be any good? Mm, not really. Cool, let's go attack this then. Prison camp. Torians might give us something decent for it. As for what we're going to take, we're going to take the components, the mechanoid components, that plasteel. None of those weapons really seem worthwhile taking. That stuff's going to be quite heavy for what it's worth. This will be fine, we can break that down into kit. This we can break down into components, it's not too heavy. And let's take these, they're good quality and normal quality. The Vortra will probably like those. And we won't bother about the steel because there might be something there that we want instead. Cool, 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 cool. Well that ended up sorting itself out alright. Let's see what they're rocking at this prison camp. Again, nothing too crazy. Looks like there's a bunch of Corians that we need to rescue. Prothean meal. What do you do, buddy? Nutrition of 1, hit points 50, market value 180. Like to make 27. A strange Prothean device that during the cooking process, the ingredients seem to disappear, but the appeared food will manifest whenever the device is grabbed by someone with a desire to eat. Odd. Nobody really knows where the ingredients are stored before consumption. Does that mean it lasts forever? So you use it and then it just respawns? I mean, well, I guess we'll find out soon as it's there. We can take it with us. Loot-wise, we've got some batteries. Not that we're too fussed about that. Chitin turrets might be a bit annoying. I say we just go in and shoot them in the face again. It worked last time, so it should work this time. We'll just go along here. We've got some trees, so we've actually got some cover. Are we expecting much from them? No, not really, but still. No point being out in the open. And Patrick, you can stay back. You've got a tree here to protect you. Only thing we've got to be careful of is that drop shield, but then we can overload it. As he died, he drops it. Nice. Well, let's go and take it then. As soon as we have the chance, they can't shoot through it, but we can shoot out. And yeah, we're going to be super annoying. <laughs> um, let's go incinerate on you. That's those two burning. They're not going to be much of a fight. In the fight much. One of those quests completed. Corians are escaping. Got some... Yeah, no, that was nice and easy. They really didn't stand much of a chance. They just came in and basically ran away. And some more loot. And some more helmets. So it means more plastil. And we like plastil. That's ready down. One turret here. Then let's go in and have a little look. See, see if there's anything for us. As for what we can pick up. Some royal insect jelly. Extra components. Yayo, wake up. Potent healing potion. For their weight, they sell for quite a lot, so we're happy with that. No plastil, unfortunately. And let's have a little look, see if they've got anything decent for armour. We'll take all the food. We can never go wrong with having too much food. Nothing too much in the way of equipment, so we just picked up some more stuff that we'll be able to smelt down. That'll be worthwhile. And all those guys can go and bleed out. And off the back of that, we got some excellent recon kit. Let's see. Let's see if it's been dropped in for us. Yeah, there we go. Prestige Recon Helmet, excellent. Don't mind that at all. And then we just got a normal Recon Helmet, that's excellent. Now the Vulture are going to like those. They're going to kind of look like Hermes with them <laughs> as they run around. The Drill look like they want to come back in for another round. And I'll tell you what we could start doing. Seeing as they keep having those trading caravans going about. So this is Aura mainly. I think that we set up a little strike team to be able to go out and intercept them. Because if they're like the normal traders, that is going to be so profitable. And we just keep doing it. So, yes, yeah, so there's three trade caravans just there. We make a really quick strike team that can get in and cause a bunch of damage. Now, Grugon's caravan is going to get back just before the Drell come in. And then that just means a whole bunch more leather and chem fuel. So we're not even mad about that. But we do have some tattered apparel on Grugon. But so long as he doesn't get rid of his kit, it should be repaired by tonight. And uh, the Drell managed to get in just before us. So let's hope that we don't come in through the top of the map tile because <laughs> our guys are decent, but oh, you did not do that. Left their rifles outside. That's not allowed. Okay, so we're going to have two Vulture without weapons and then we're missing four uh, two Krogan and four Vulture. 
even though they are coming in right now. So we've got to see where they come in. Hopefully it's up here or down there. Because if it's anywhere else, they're going to be trapped out in the open. Cool, they're in a good place. Right, so what we do straight away with the donkeys, we put them onto area. All right, they're already on area two. That's fine. These guys will come in before the drill, if the drill decide to go anywhere. Then we can gun them down. A1 to your defensive positions. And let's get ready for a shootout. The third drill into the kill zone does have a low shield. So if he was any smart and ran in, then he would have caused a bunch of problems. But he deployed it right back here, which is just out of the range of everything else. Because most of these drills seem to have really short ranged weapons. Now that one is a little bit annoying. So, Grugon, you're with me, mate. Let's go defense matrix. In we come. Move this way, and then we get an overload straight on top of that. Move back. Then you guys, everything into that <laughs> burnt out low shield. Stop that from being able to recharge and come back online. You guys going to hit it? No, it looks like we're having trouble hitting this. Let's go again, straight onto that. Okay, came back online. Straight back into defensive positions, reset your shooting so we're not firing into there. Grugon. Do you know what also works well if people are trying to be sneaky? There's a little bit of fire. Let's put that there, cause some problems, move back. What are you trying to do? Just throw a grenade at the wall. Terrifying. Drell have no stomach for a fight at all. Absolutely none. Go, cool, we'll leave them be. No point chasing them down. Waste of time, we've got things that we need to be getting on with. Like making a massive Vulture clone army. Finish the advanced multi-analyzer. Which means now we're on to the Prothean tech. So, he... <laughs> Grugon, you're over here, mate. And if you would kindly use the tech-proof persona call for us to unlock the rest of it, because this means we can get rid of these machining tables and put the Prothean benches in. Those Prothean benches will allow us to strip mechanoids down, and you get so much from the mechanoids when you strip them down. So, you get the architect components, which are insane by themselves, and then when our little hauler bots and stuff die, we get both of the advanced components back from them. Which I don't think is intended to happen because I'm pretty sure that is cheaper. Well, it's actually more than what it costs to build them. So when you start losing the hauler bots, you're actually making a profit off them. Which I am completely okay with. I'm super fine with that. And I'll be interested to see when we take down, say, the Loki mechs and the Basher mechs. When we strip those down, what we get from those. Oh, and you also get architect fragments from the auto haulers as well. So they're going to be super useful. A little bit expensive to start with, but they pay themselves off in maybe like one or two mechanoid raids, which is going to be fine. And just like that, Prothean Fundamentals is researched. We can't go into the other Prothean tech, so let's start making our way to the Mass Effect field manipulation, which means we can go into the Prothean, not the Prothean, the Mass Effect technologies, which means we can start getting the N7 armor and armory which are going to be fantastic for us. Or, actually I'll tell you what we do before that. Because we were Vorcher, and Vorcher like flying things, let's go make the skip. So that'll give us transport pods, the super pod, and the skip. This means we're going to be able to get around the map a little bit easier. And there's a whole thing in the lore where the Alliance goes and gets a bunch of Vorcher, round them up, and then just turn them into fighter pilots, which I think is pretty cool. And how did we end up over there? This might be something quite interesting, so the hypercoagulator. Now it says tiredness 75% and pain 40%. Now if I am not mistaken, the tiredness at 75%, so you'd have 100% being base normal. When you have it at 75%, that takes it down obviously by 25%. If I'm not mistaken, which would mean that the Vulture would need 25% less sleep, and then obviously the pain, and then immunity gain speed, blah blah blah. And also, mental break threshold minus 15%. I think we pick one of those up. That will go into the next batch of Vort of Vorture. So we'll get one of those, see how that does. And then if it works, obviously, we can build by more. Two of the Vorture clones are ready. So we're going to take them out. And then we'll go put them into a little room, operate on them. And then that should be Mickey Mark II's one of them. We've already got Zilsa out. And I think... We'll upgrade Belakar. Belakar's pretty decent across the board, does really well, and is also one of our constructors does animal as well, which will all be covered in the other ones and there's good shooting, so Belakar's the next upgrade. 
this was a little bit of fun. So recording away, so I've got my audio, got my video, everything's going great. Then the PC screen goes all funny, gets sent back to the home screen. And yeah, crashed the rim weld. And then it turned out I didn't have enough storage on my <laughs> SSD. So none of the audio was recorded. None of the picture was recorded and got sent back a day because obviously Iron Man, I can only save once. So it goes back to the last autosave. Thankfully, not a crazy amount happened in that time. He hopes. No, nothing too much happened. But it just means we just got a bunch more work to do. We did manage to get those somewhat finished off, but now we've got to redo it. But details, we'll skip past it. You won't know. Oh, we got attacked by some drow. That's what happened. We got attacked by some drow, and then we're also trying to buy up some body parts for the sleeves, which are now here. Okay, let's go rescue those. And then let's get some more clones on the go. I'm not sure if you see it, but yeah, we, we went and took out the EMI. Nothing too much happened there. Then we took out the prison camp and it was just like a handful of pirates in really bad armor. We just shot them down and they dead. All right, let's get to work on Mickey Mark II. So advanced bionic spine into the hypercoagulator. We haven't got any advanced bionics uh, because we're broke. <laughs> so you got two bionic arms. Need to do something to increase the consciousness. And then let's put a cortical stack in. And just keep an eye out for some more bionics. About time that we worked on <laughs> improving the kill box. So we're going to take this area, we're going to make this embrasures all along there. Normally we go embrasure wall, embrasure wall because that offers better protection. But if we can build them along here, these guys here are the ones that are going to get shot and these guys won't. But if you have a wall, you have way better armor penetration, well armor protection, but you can't shoot as far because the walls block the shots. Running straight embrasures is going to give us a better angle of fire for anything that's coming up on this bit. This bit is soon going to need to work because, <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that's slowly getting worn down along here. And what I'm also thinking, because it seems like a good idea, not that it's actually practical at all, we are going to start building some little hard points for the mortars. So we've got the mortars down here, and we've had them a few times and they've been taken out, and also mortars are super useful. So we're going to go mortar, wool, mortar, wool, and then we're going to do it on that side. I think we might go up to six. And then in the middle, we are going to have the storeroom for the shells. So the guys go run to the mortar, fire the shell, come back to the storeroom, pick it up. That is going to be covered. These are going to be open so they can fire. And then we'll extend down here a little bit and then maybe put some turrets and stuff in. So it makes a nice little mini fort within the base. So if this falls for whatever reason, we might be able to then pull back towards here and then defend from this point if this is in trouble. So we need to set it in a point where the lines will be in a situation where they cannot shoot through our kill zone at us, but we can pull back whilst in cover to take a secondary defensive position, is what I'm thinking. And I think that could work out pretty good. So Mickey Mark II is now ready to go. Construction, mining, cooking, plants, crafting, artistic. Yeah, these are some very good vulture. And for his work, um, because he hasn't got the extra brain implants, we're going to have him mainly on crafting for the moment. And how about you do secondary implants, because obviously plants are some that we're running low on. And how about a free in mining just in case? And I think that puts him into a pretty good situation. More drill coming in, which means more still for us, which is fine. Oh man, the drill sucks so bad. <laughs> they are literally the worst. Krogans are terrifying. They're strong, very high hit pulls. They have loads of redundant organs, so trying to take them out is really difficult. They don't feel pain, and the more damage they get, the quicker they are. Vorcha never stay down. Torians are pretty good as well. The Asari, for some reason, are just hard as nails. And then you just have the Drell that have rubbish equipment, or rubbish armor, and just like running to their deaths. These guys, though, we are going to run down. 
We don't always run people down, but we are at the moment, we're ahead on all the processing. So we want the extra chem fuel, the extra lever, and then all the extra good stuff. And the more of them we can kill, the better it's going to be for us. So we'll move Chinook and Grudoff up there. And so as things come around the corner, they've also got a shot in as well. And it does look like a couple shots are going their way, but it's not a big deal. they got decent enough armor, they're going to be fine. And I want to see how this affects the kill zone. Because what I'm thinking is, because they're shooting from this angle, this area is going to start getting dug out. And then as and when, the further and further, this area is just going to get dug. To the point where it just keeps collapsing, then I think we need to do something about it. And yet, you have your defensive shield, but just run through it. Go for it. You know that's what you want to do. And chase. Some will go around the top. That will cut them off. Oh no, they're going this way now. Cool. Let's keep going. We're faster than they are. And let's take them out. So it's looking like only a handful will actually manage to escape. Ergonaut has been tagged a few times though. Nothing too deadly. Not missed any body parts or any of that fun stuff. So... Yeah, sucks to be a drill today. Just having a thought. What's happening is we get the bodies and then we butcher them up. That's all fine, which leaves the meat up here, and but also leaves their clothes. Which means that we end up having to come to here to haul it back down to this section. But we have conveniently got a little spare bit of space here. So what I think that we do is we take the granite heavy reinforced walls, we go to here, and then we put in the butcher spots into this section. So we just we'll just copy the template off here and off these and then they go to there. So that means when our guys are smelting down, they don't have to worry about there being other stuff to be smelted down on the other parts of the map, so then they just get brought into here. Which I think is gonna work out pretty well for us. So we just take that, those walls will be made, and then all we need to do is just mine this section out and just transfer what's up here down to here and then just put the coolers in. And I think the way we'll do the coolers is they'll feed into this room because we're not bothered about this room getting too hot. And that room's minus 30, so yeah, we'll be good. New template has been put in for the kitchen, so it's just everything from up here basically being moved down. Don't want to forget about the coolers, they're going to be super important. Obviously, we don't want everything rotting away in there. We're probably going to need to put in probably, I reckon another two, to be honest. And that'll keep that nice and cold. That is going to have to be an auto door in there. And what do we have plenty of? I think we've got enough marble, so it's going to be a marble door. Then we'll go tile that, then when we get a chance we'll start tiling around here as well. And what we might do, in fact, is get these. We'll move that door somewhere else, get those. Double them up so they're facing this way as well. And then on this side, this will just be for all of the metal ball kit. So this is all for the stuff that needs to be destroyed or burnt. And then that side would then be for all of the kit, like flak vests and stuff, ones that we can get some resources out of. Yeah, I think that would work pretty good. This would be a very, very expensive bit of kit, but would be awesome. <laughs> so it's an Alliance Precision Rifle, legendary quality, damage 22, armor penetration 45%, and 100% accuracy from close to long with a 1.9 second cooldown. So this is a wicked bit of kit. Definitely not worth 5,800, but if we gave that to one of our guys, we'd never need to worry about getting them another weapon. Flip side, it's the only advantage this thing has is really its range, because we know a masterwork battle rifle does more damage, has a faster cooldown rate, and better armor penetration, and shoots two shots, but only has a range of, I think, 31. It is tempting to buy just because it's legendary, which I don't think is a good reason to buy something. Don't think buying that sniper rifle is going to be a great idea, but N7 Heavy Helmet excellent. Now that is a good shout. That will last us throughout the whole of the game. So we'll pick that up. But what we have been looking for, and I am easily distracted, is we want more bionic parts because those bionic parts mean that we can get the other vultures up on their feet sooner than later because we still have one empty sleeve. Not able to find the body parts that we want, so we're just going to pick up two advanced barnet legs. They will do for the moment. We'd like the targeting VI, but really we're not going to be using that at the moment. 
Forgot that we still have weapons in storage, so we are going to be able to equip at least two more Vorcher up in that time. With that, I think we've done pretty well. We're going to have at least four more Vorcher, hopefully, in the next episode. We got the neutral air mean on the way, so these are going to be redone. We saved the base from getting wiped out from the EMI. And we're getting the Vorcher going, which is good. That's obviously what we need. And we're going to have some absolute powerhouses super soon. So thank you very much for watching. I'll be Konzi, and I look forward to catching you on the next one.